Hey mate, how you doing? Hey Luke, <laughs> good, how good are you? you? I'm very well, man. Oh. Welcome. Come through, come through. Thank you. Let's do this. Let's do it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Avon. I'm a photographer from Norway based here in London and I am a fashion and portrait photographer. My work at the moment is quite cyberpunk-esque. Um, there's lots of inspiration that comes from uh, cosmic horror movies like Alien. Um, I, yeah, I love horror movies and sci-fi and it kind of infuses a lot of my work basically. Today we will be going through three to four different lighting setups. The first lighting setup is playing with the power tubes and different settings, especially the hue loop, which is one of my favorite settings. And the hue loop basically just allows us to uh, rotate the colors so that you can get lots of different options, which is really fun. Um, the second setup that we will be doing today is playing with the projector attachments. With the projector attachments, we can create really specific shapes of light, which is going to be really exciting. And then uh, thirdly, we will be uh, introducing a smoke machine. With the smoke machine, we can create really specific pathways and uh, interesting shapes and see how kind of like the light interacts with the smoke. Also, finally, I'm going to show you how I use uh, lasers in my photography. I always preferred working with continuous lights. Uh, every time I've worked with flash photography or like studio flashes and stuff, I felt like I didn't have enough control. I think what's important for me is I love seeing like the, result, uh, the results instantly when I kind of make my adjustments. I, I like, whenever I use flash, I feel like I'm making adjustments and then I fire it and it just doesn't look the way that I want it to feel. So that's why I always prefer working with continuous lights because it just feels more um, responsive for me. I have full control of the, all the colors that I want to work with because um, whenever I've been using gels and stuff, it's very limiting and you, you can only like have either or, or you can combine maybe two gels to make a different color. But then with the power tubes, for example, you can just make that fine, like exact, like very specific color. Um, so yeah, I think that's really important. And then also being able to just play with different setups. I want to become more into moving image as well. So for me as well, being, being able to just film the results instantly with my, with my phone and stuff, I think is really important. So today we'll be shooting Tethered. Um, the guys from Tethered Tools have been really kind and sent me some kit from them, which we'll be using today. Um, I pr always prefer shooting Tethered when I'm working for a client because then we're able to have instantly look at the images on a computer and then we can also just make adjustments to see if we need to um, change any of the color setups. And then today we'll also be using the Nanlink app, which is connected to all of the lights in the studio here today. So we're now in the studio with our lovely model, Olive, from Crumb Agency. And today we'll be going through, well now I'll be going through the first uh, setup. So you see we've got uh, four uh, different power tubes set up. So I've got two here in the back. Um, they've got these little barn doors that kind of blocks the light so we don't get too much spillage onto Olive. Then I've got another um, power tube here just so we get a little bit of hair light and a little bit of um, rim light on Olive. And then I'm using power tube 30X here as our uh, key light on Olive. So um, right now all the power tubes, they're set to a daylight temperature. But now with the app, I can just easily click on effect mode and we've got it on the hue loop setting. So now you see the color just changing on Olive's face. I'm going to go on the 15X here and then do the same setting, click on the effect mode and then I'm going to click on, instead of one way, I'm going to have it reverse because then we'll have two different colors kind of intersecting with each other. This is what I love uh, with, with, um, with the hue loops is I can just hold in the button now and basically I can just shoot all these different color options. If I want to change the color of the back, I can also click on these ones. I can also put these. I'm just gonna click on HSI mode. And then here on the HSI mode, I can choose a very specific color. And you see now I'm filling the whole room. 
This is why I like shooting with um, a, a, a studio with a white cove because the white cove will basically just absorb whatever color I apply to it. So it's kind of like instead of shooting with different color backdrops, you're just turning a white backdrop into your color backdrop. And the cool thing with having um, two, two lights on, two, on the different sides is I can then go on the other light and then I can have two different colors. So if I have one side that's blue, like that, and then that one I can make pink. So now if I adjust my camera, put it here in the middle, you can get quite a nice little gradient between. And then as well, the closer you move the lights to the background, the kind of more um, extreme the gradient becomes. So if you kind of want to have like a really um, like abrupt gradient, you can just move the lights a bit closer. Uh, and then if I put that on the hue, hue mode like the other one. So now we have all these different color options. There, perfect. Lovely. Turn your head that way and then look up at the light. There, nice, that looks really good. Amazing. Let's have a look here. Oh yeah, that looks really good. Nice. Look over at the camera. Perfect. There, nice. Turn your head that way. There, but then eyes at the camera. There, and then move forward just a little bit that way. Yeah, perfect. A little bit back. There, great. Hold that. Lovely. So now I'm gonna play a little bit with um, something called the split diopter. And with the split diopter, basically you end up having two different focal lengths on the image. So I can kind of play a little bit with adding, making some of the shots a little bit out of focus, just to add a little bit of nice texture to the shots. And then with this, I can just play a little bit. There, nice. Gorgeous. That looks really nice. Ah, oh, yeah. That looks really cool. Nice. Chin up. There, look over at me. There, great. Come back just a little bit there. Yep, good. Nice, perfect, that looks really good. And then we got our little split diopter. There. Great. So this is why I prefer shooting with the hue loop because you see now we have all these different color options. So rather than like if you're shooting with gels and stuff, which is really time consuming and having to change with the hue loop, we are able to just put on a really wide range of colors that we can play and combine with each other. Subconsciously, I always work like with complementary colors. Uh, for like, if you use like um, a color wheel, for example, and you look at some of my images, you always see like, uh, you're able to either kind of look at uh, complementary colors or tertiary colors. You could even like draw like, like a little triangle. Uh, I actually talk about this in my Domestica course. Also, yeah, like I, like I mentioned earlier, um, one of my biggest inspirations is horror movies. And I always look at like the color palettes that are used in horror movies. So that's why it's like, this is why I think it's really important that when I'm using, uh, when I, uh, when I'm using these lights that I try to control it as much as possible because I want really dark shadows like the blacks I want the blacks to be blacks I don't want it to bleed too much out so this is also like, like when I'm looking at like horror movies and stuff like that it's always got like that really dark atmosphere about them so when I whenever I work with with my lights I always try to control it as much as possible which is why I'm using like the egg crates and the barn doors when we're looking now at uh, Olive, we can see like we've got a really controlled light here on her face because of the barn door and the egg crate is not bleeding way too much on the background. So if I want to change this, I can also kind of make it more like that and then move it. So it's more like head on at Olive like that. That way it's not bleeding way too much on the background. And now we can see we've got a really, um, really strong contrast here. We've got the hair light and then we've got the main light here. But then this part of Olive's face now is in the shadows. Nice. Turn your head a little bit towards the camera. Perfect. And then eyes at the camera. Perfect. 
Look here at my hand, there. Just look at that point, perfect. And then if I wanna play a bit more now with this filter, I can add that. Just gonna add a bit more of an atmosphere. So now I go on the app, I go on the HSI mode, and then I just bring the red all the way down. And the same on the other tube. HSI, red. So these are one of my favorite colors that I like using. So if I now go on the 30X, and then I'm gonna make that a blue. I love that contrast between the blue and the red. And then now if I go on, uh, on the hair light, a nice complementary color to the red is green. I go on the HSI mode and then I make that a green. There. So now we've got three, uh, three colors. We've got the blue as our main light, the green as our key light, and then in the background, we've got the red. So now that I'm going to introduce the projectors, I want the projector to have a bit of a punch. So I'm turning off the 30X and the 15. So if we're looking at Olive now, she is just a black silhouette and now if I turn on the projector, we've got a nice, like, uh, film noir-esque uh, lighting on her face. So this is from the uh, Forza 500. And then now I also have another one. So I adjusted the blades on the Forza 60 to make just one stripe go that way. And then on the Forza 500, I made one go that way. So now we've got this really cool cross across um, Olive's face. And then now, if I want to move Olive just like a little bit this way, they are perfect. There. A little bit up with your chin, perfect. There, and just look right into the light. So you see how big of an impact you kind of get. With the projector, I can also adjust the width. So if you're looking at Olive's face now, with the stripe that's going here, I can pull these leaves. So if I want to have like a wider shot, I can do that. But I kind of, for dramatic effect, I just want it to be quite thin. I can even play with like the positioning of it. So there. And then I can also play with the focus to move it like that. So if I want it really thin, just like that. If you stand a bit more like this, there, and then just look over that way, there. Cool. How does that look? Yes. A little bit up with the chin. And then move forward just a little bit. There. Up with the chin. Down with the chin. There. A bit more. There. Nice. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Perfect. Just like that. Nice. Let's have a look at that. That's really cool. Uh, I can also, and then I'm gonna adjust the focus just a little bit. There. There we go. That looks really cool. Yeah, just look up at the light. Perfect. Just like that. That's really good. So the reason why I moved the projector from that side to this side is because I wanna shoot olive in profile. So if I have the light here, you see how kind of the light wraps around Olive's nose and mouth. So we kind of get that really cool outline of her face. So now I've shown how we can use the projector attachments to create shaped lights on the face, but we can also add a uh, texture to the background as well using the projectors. So I've got another projector set up here uh, on the Forza 500. And uh, if I turn this, if I crank up the light now, and we're looking at the background, we can add like little nice details. The cool thing with the projector attachments is we can put different filters on it as well. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you're working with, uh, with uh, these guys is you should probably have gloves because the metal can get quite hot. The filter that I got on right now is just like a little twinkly star thing 
I'm not a massive fan of it, so I want to try a different, uh, a, a different filter. So if I slide that out, it's already getting quite hot, the metal. So take that off. Let's try like the sunset kind of looking thing. Also one thing to remember, if you're putting it down like this way, it's going to be projected upside down. So if I wanted to kind of look like a sunrise, I just have to turn this upside down like that and then pop it back in here and then pull out the levers. And we see now it's quite bright, so it's overpowering the red. So if I turn down the brightness, just so it's on like one. And then if we look now on the camera, we can kind of get a nice texture in the back. So if I shoot that now. Ah, oh, that looks great. So now that we've finished the first and the second setup, we are going to introduce uh, an element of smoke. With the smoke machine, what happens is that we get like a bit more texture with the light and we're able to create really like specific beams and stuff. So I think that's gonna be a really cool thing to play with. So the reason I love working with smoke machines is uh, again, my inspiration, all of my inspirations comes from sci-fi and horror movies. I'm always really inspired by movies like Alien. And if you watch like the first Alien movie by Ridley Scott, you see like when, when the laser is coming through and is scanning all the eggs and stuff. I think that's really cool. If you don't have a laser, I think what, what is really cool with using the projector attachments is that you can still create these really like really refined lines with the light. So that is what we're gonna experiment with today. So for this first setup, I've got the Forza 500 with a, bo uh, with a projector attachment that has a Bowens uh, mount. And the reason why I'm using this one is because the Forza 500 has uh, the most uh, output out of the Forza series. Uh, so what I want to do now, I'm gonna create a very like sharp beam of light and I basically want Olive to hold the light. Like it's almost like a little like rainfall coming into her hands. And then what, what is gonna happen is that the light is gonna reflect off her hands and it's gonna light up her face. Um, the only other light I'm gonna have on is just the uh, pavo tube here with the egg crate on the floor, just so we had another uh, color as well. And then I got a uh, blue gel here on, on the Forza. So now that I turn on the light, you can't really see the beam of light yet. You can see, you can see my hand here like that. So Olive, if you come here, and I just want you to kind of hold your hand here and then I want you to like grab the light where it is like the sharpest, like that, perfect. And then just look down, cool. So now if I do a test shot, I like what's happening. If I grab my smoke machine, I just bring it up here. And you see when the smoke hits the light, it basically just helps illuminate uh, Olive's face as well. So if I do another shot now, If we're looking now, you see how the pathway of the light becomes more prominent. And if I fill the room with a bit more smoke, go, go, go. And then quickly step out. There, perfect. There, that's great. Nice. Look over at me, Olive. Great. Actually, look down that way. Perfect. There. Ah, oh, that looks so cool. A bit more smoke, yeah. Perfect. And then step out. Great. Cool. So now for this setup, uh, I've set up the Forza in that corner. I've changed the gel into a green gel. And instead of a beam of light, we're gonna make a, a, a wall of light. So the, um, it's still a thin line and the line is gonna hit Olive's face here. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up having uh, like um, a really cool path of light shining through the smoke. And that's great, hold that, nice. It looks really cool. And then should we add maybe an element of red, I think. So if we're looking at Olive now, we can kind of see if Olive's face comes through here, we, we see here now, we get this really like cool path happening. There, gorgeous, yeah. And I think there's, a, I really like, I really quite like how Olive's face is uh, almost overexposed. And then we're looking at like the pathway here. If you're looking at her face, 
and how you kind of get that really nice contrast. Uh, just a little bit of smoke, Luke. Great. Come forward just a little bit. I, that's great. Up with the chin just a little bit and then move your head towards me. Hold that. Great. Ah, oh, that looks so cool. A little bit of smoke, Luke. Yeah. Perfect. So for the next setup, uh, I'm going to show what it looks like with the smoke uh, with the projector completely behind the model instead. So for that, I've got this projector here and it is a Forza 60. The reason why we don't need a really strong uh, light when the projector is facing the camera itself is because the, the beams are so concentrated because of the angle. It can be a Forza 60 which has a bit uh, lower voltage. If you're looking here now, it's just a big, big, wide uh, projection. But if I put the Starry Sky uh, Gobo on it, what happens is a bit of magic. We suddenly get these beams of light coming through. And uh, what's cool with the projector attachment as well is that we can adjust the focal plane of these. So if you want the beams of light to be more diffused or a bit more um, specific, you can kind of adjust that accordingly. So now I'm just making it there. Perfect. And then as well, I've got um, a green, I've got the Pavo tube set underneath and is facing up against Olive here. And the reason why I've done that is uh, like in a lot of horror movies, you see like the villain is lit from underneath to make them kind of look scary and ominous. So I kind of wanted to pay a little homage to that. Take one step forward, Olive. Yeah, a bit more. There, perfect. There. And now I am also going to play a little bit with, uh, I think it might look cool if I bring in my split diopter. That looks really cool. And then I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. There. Perfect. And Luke, if you give us a little bit of smoke now. There, yeah, that's great. Perfect, that looks so good. And then with a the split diopter, I can play around a bit. Get a little bit of smoke here on this side. Yeah, that's great. Perfect. Nice. I'm gonna bring up that green a little bit. There, great. Nice. So we can see now how we got these really nice beams of light and it's really sharp here and then it kind of slowly dissipates and goes out of focus. And, when, and as well, because I'm shooting on a 50 mil with a really wide aperture, you kind of get a really nice uh, play with the light and the beams. There. Let's see and then hit us with some smoke. Great, nice. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, these look great. There, yeah, just look over at me. Nice. So now that we're done with the projector attachments, I want to show you how I use lasers in my photography. Uh, the main difference using a laser and a projector attachment is the focal point. Uh, so like it, remember I told you, you can adjust the focal length uh, on the projector attachment to kind of like adjust where the beam is kind of in focus. But with the laser, it's basically the same consistent beam throughout the entire projection. So what I've done now, I've replaced the projection attachment that was behind uh, Olive uh, with my laser cube. Look at the camera, great. Move forward just a little bit. There, yeah, perfect. There, great. Hold that, perfect, nice. That looks really good. There, great. Look up at the light. Great. Let's see how these look. 
Fantastic. At the wall, with this Lumia filter, if I pop it here on the cube, you see we get this fun texture. I always just end up going back to red, but... Well, let's make the cube red. There. Stay there. <laughs> and then now, on the Nunlink app, we go blue. There we go. Perfect. So the light is a bit more up. And yeah, if you look up at the light, perfect. Yeah, that looks really good. So now I brought down the brightness of the blue because I want the red to stand out. And yeah, just look up at the light. Perfect. I think we got what we need. So that's a wrap. I hope you learned something today. We've gone through four different types of lighting setups. Uh, thank you so much to the amazing Olive from Crum Agency to helping us out today. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning in.